Hey guys, what's going on? John here from flymikealpha.com and today we're going to be going over turns about a point. Everything you need to know about them, how they're done in the airplane, all the tips and tricks to know, and what it ultimately looks like. So first, let's go ahead and define what a turn about a point is. Ultimately, it's simply a maneuver where you're flying relatively low to the ground and you're making a circle around a defined point. The purpose of this maneuver is to practice changing your bank angle or changing your rate of turn to accommodate the wind. So to account for the wind that's trying to blow you away from the point. If we were to simply circle a point and not change our bank angle ever, well, the airplane would be drifting with the wind that is blowing up at altitude and you'd eventually get blown away from that point. We're trying to control the airplane in reference to what's on the ground because ultimately you're going to be making turns in the traffic pattern and trying to get lined up with the runway which is on the ground and the wind up high is going to be blowing you away from or towards the runway or affecting you in some way that you're going to have to account for. So what are we looking for for completion standards on this maneuver? Well, the skills as defined by the ACS to complete a turn about a point, a ground reference maneuver, are going to be first to clear the area. The student selects a suitable ground reference area, so you're selecting a good definable point. I really like choosing two intersections, two intersecting roads, where you have 90 degree roads to really choose that compared to trying to choose something large and arbitrary like a lake or a, uh, or a runway or an airport or a house. Choosing a very small defined point. We'll talk about that more later, choosing your appropriate point. Next, you need to plan the maneuver appropriately. This maneuver should be planned to be done between 600 and 1,000 feet AGL. So I like to aim for 800 feet AGL because be you do need to stay within that 600 to 1,000 foot AGL envelope. And they are also looking for you to maintain your altitude plus or minus 100 feet. So by choosing 800 feet, that gives you plus or minus 100 on either side, keeps you within that 600 to 1,000 foot envelope very nicely. They also want you to try to maintain your airspeed within plus or minus 10 knots and want you to divide your attention between airplane control, traffic avoidance, still looking outside the airplane, looking for other traffic rather than just staring at the point on the ground, and also monitor the ground track while maintaining coordinated flight. So look at the point on the ground, make corrections with bank as necessary, using your ailerons and rudder together to stay coordinated. Don't forget to use the rudder when you're using the ailerons during this maneuver. Now let's go ahead and look at how it's actually done. So your first step is going to be determine where the wind is coming from, and not necessarily where the wind is coming from the ground, but where the wind is coming from aloft. So if there's a big difference between the wind at 1,000 feet and the wind at the surface, you'll want to use the more accurate, the wind at 1,000 feet. Oftentimes, you can simply use whatever the wind is on the ground. So if it's coming from 270 at 10 knots on the ground, it's probably relatively the same 600 to 1,000 feet above the ground. Next, you're going to want to start on the downwind. So you're going to want to start with the wind on your tail. So after you've selected your point, like we said earlier, I like to choose two intersecting roads and aim for the exact middle of the intersection. Aim small, miss small. So don't choose a large target like a lake or like a clump of trees. Choose something very tiny and defined, like a windsock at an airport or like two intersecting roads. Something very tiny and defined. Also. Make sure when you're choosing this area, it's in an unpopulated area because you're going to be flying pretty low and you don't want to disturb your neighbors or break any other regulations of flying too low over people or property. So choosing an unpopulated area like this where there's houses a little bit further away and there's really nothing around there, plus there's some awesome fields to land in should you ever have a problem at low altitude like an engine failure. So now that we've determined where the wind's coming from, we're going to start this maneuver with the wind on our tail on the downwind, very similar to starting your traffic pattern on the downwind when you first enter the traffic pattern at a 45 degree angle like we talked about in a previous lesson. So we're starting on the downwind and as we come abeam our point, so as it's off of our left or right side, you're going to do this maneuver both to the left and to the right. As the point is abeam you, you're then going to roll into the maneuver and because you're moving quickly with a high ground speed because you have a tailwind at this point, it's going to require more bank angle initially. So the steepest turn will be when you have a tailwind. As you come around, you want to get your nose pointed slightly upwind to account for the wind drift. So as you come down to your bottom 90 degree point, that's when you want to have turned not just 90 degrees, but actually made about a 100 to 110 degree turn. So your nose is pointed slightly upwind and you're accounting for that wind drift. As you come around into the second 90 degree section of the circle, you're going to shallow your bank slightly, rolling 
not wings level, but nearly wings level as you come back up beam your point, working your way upwind. If you keep that bank angle in there, the trouble is you're going to keep turning and you're going to get blown too close to your point. You want to shallow the bank and get further away from it, work your way upwind. As you start to get adequately far upwind into the third quarter of this turn, then you'll start to roll in the bank again, and you'll start to roll in steeper and steeper and steeper until you come into the fourth quarter of the turn, the last 90 degree portion of it, and you're going to be rolling very steep again because your ground speed is increasing and your rate of turn needs to increase as well to accomplish the turn in a quicker amount of time since you have less time passing that point. What you ultimately need to remember here is high ground speed, high bank angle, low ground speed, low bank angle. When you're going into the wind, shallow your wings, shallow your bank, and fight your way upwind so you can cover more distance before the turn happens. Now, when you have a high ground speed, make sure you steepen the bank and finish the turn before you get blown further away from the point. Ultimately, if you're getting far away from your point, steepen your bank angle. If you're getting too close to your point, shallow your bank angle. Those are the simplest ways to explain this maneuver, and that's ultimately all you need to remember in the airplane. The ultimate goal here is to make a perfectly round circle as if there was a pencil attached to the bottom of the airplane and you're drawing a perfectly round circle around that point, maybe a half mile wide circle, three eighths of a mile wide, three quarters of a mile wide, whatever uh, distance you choose to do this at. But ultimately, just don't get blown back across your points. The only way you could really fail this maneuver on a check ride is to bust the altitude, really bust your airspeed there, plus or minus 10 knots, or to get blown back across your point. Roughly inscribe a round circle onto the ground. That's all we're really looking for here. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments below. Hopefully you found this video helpful and it's prepared you well to go ahead and jump into the airplane and practice this with your flight instructor. Make sure you give us a like on this video, thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel. Keep up with our latest episodes as they come out, helping you prepare for your flight training. Make sure you check out our Private Pilot Ground School, totally free online ground school at fly8mikealpha.com, fly8ma.com. And check out all the other awesome courses on there. There's lots of free courses for you guys to try out and lots of awesome resources on there for checkride prep. If you sign up for our premium checkride prep, You'll get one-on-one -on -one help with a flight instructor via Skype or any other medium. You can even sit down with them in person. They will help prepare you for the oral, and we guarantee you will pass your check ride. So check out flyatmikealpha.com. We really appreciate all your support and are so glad that you guys choose to study with us. As always, if you can't fly every day, then flyatmikealpha.com. We will see you all next time.